Hey guys, this is Anime Desu, and this recap of I Parry Everything Season 1. Nor was a young man living in a fantasy world who was pretty strong for his age and very well liked by everyone in the town. He worked a job requiring manual labor, but even his boss was impressed by his work and never said a word against him, as he was the best worker he had ever seen. One day, after taking his daily wage, he was about to head back when he suddenly heard the voice of a woman screaming for help coming from a nearby cave. He immediately rushed over, even after his boss told him not to as it could be dangerous. He ignored everyone's warnings and entered the cave, only to see a girl wrapped in magical barbed wire while an adventurous party faced off against a giant demonic bull. Ever since he was a child, Nor always had to take care of his mother and the household because his father never came back. But he took it like a champ and started taking care of the house. His mom was sickly and mostly bedridden, so he made hot soup for her to drink while covered in soot and told her that he was going out to hunt some rabbits so she could have some protein for dinner. His mother cleaned his face while apologizing for not being able to give him anything in life, but Nor put on a brave face and told her he didn't need anything anyway. Later that night, he prepared a hearty rabbit stew for his mom, but when he came back to feed her, she had already passed away. Now, poor Nor had no one to call family in this world. He buried his mother outside the house but decided that he couldn't be weak and cry. He started living alone, tending to the garden, catching game, taking care of the farm animals, and studying inside his room after thoroughly cleaning it. He trained his body by catching wild fish, carrying heavy loads on the mountains, and eating lots of protein every day. One night, due to loneliness, he climbed on top of a chair and took out an old dusty storybook and started reading it. This took him way back as he remembered the time when his family was whole and his father would tell him tales about mighty adventurers who fought colossal dragons, learned magic from wizards, lifted curses in the haunted forest, and fought against an army of elves. These stories always fascinated him as his father would tell him that the duty of an adventurer is to protect the weak people and make sure they are never hurt. This gave him inspiration to do something with his life, and the next day, after tending to the animals, he got ready to leave his home and move towards the city to try and be an adventurer. He stayed in the forest at night with a campfire, and by the next morning he arrived at the beautiful city of his kingdom. He entered the giant main gate and was completely blown away to see the number of people roaming around the markets, selling their goods and people buying swords and fruits at the same place. While walking, he noticed a man with a sword and decided to follow him, which led him to the Adventurer's Guild. He entered the establishment to find a big burly man at the reception instead of a thick furry girl. Disappointed, he told the man that he was here to be an adventurer, but the man brushed him off, saying that this was no place for kids and that he should think about his parents. Nor replied that his parents were dead, which caught the man's attention, and he told him to drop by the training school first. Nor seemed confused, but the man told him that to join a guild he needed to pick a school, go through basic training, pick his class and skills, and only after graduating could he become an adventurer. Nor was happy for the information and excitedly headed over to a school with the aim to become the strongest swordsman. He enrolled and started training in the way of the sword, but even after several weeks, while every other student started awakening their magical potential, Nor still had no magical abilities. He kept practicing, and several months passed by, after which the instructor told him that he didn't have the talent and was wasting his time there. He was told to join a different school as he was definitely not fit to be a swordsman. Nor didn't give up and found another school, deciding to train as a warrior. He started training under a big fat redhead, but even after going through intense training for several months, the redhead told him that he didn't have the talent for it, as all he had learned was how to parry attacks. He then went through several different schools first as a hunter, but he got kicked out. Then he tried to become a thief but got rejected as he had no talent for it. He then tried to become a magician but failed even in that. So finally he decided to become a healer but failed and returned back disappointed. The man at the guild was shocked to learn that even after spending months at every school, Nor didn't learn a single thing and told him that, unfortunately, there was nothing he could do to become an adventurer. たった一振りで山のように大きな竜。ハンター。天才な道具を扱うセンスが。カラバコの罠も解除でやってもプチファイヤー一つとは。クレリック。釣り傷を癒す程度とはいえ。<笑> Disappointed in himself, Nor left the city and returned back to his cottage in the woods. But he decided that he was not going to admit defeat and created his own training setup with a sword. He decided to perfect the one move that he learned, which was to parry and deflect attacks aimed at him. He spent days perfecting it, day and night, and finally, after a year of rigorous training, he became strong enough to parry ten attacks at once. He decided to keep training, and three years passed by, after which he managed to parry a hundred swords at once but gained no new skills. He kept training endlessly to the point where his sword broke, 
Fourteen years passed by as he realized that in these past years, he had trained every single day and was now able to parry a thousand swords at once without fail. Despite putting in this much hard work, he didn't gain any new skills but still decided to head over to the Adventurer's Guild once more. This time he met a young girl who looked at his skill set only to advise him to visit the training school, nor told her that he had already been through them, which surprised the girl as she told him that he didn't have any skills to make him an adventurer. Nor got disheartened once again when the man at the reception came out and barely recognized him. They sat down to talk over some beer when Nor told him about his training for the past years. The man told him that there are ranks in an adventurer from E to S, but even to become E rank, you need at least one skill which Nor didn't have. Nor got sad, but the man told him that not many people knew, but there was another rank below E, which was F. There are some limitations for F rank adventurers as they can't take kill quests or work in the forests outside the city they can only take odd manual labor jobs in the city, but no one would really want to do that. And to his surprise, Nor immediately accepted and finally got his adventurer's license. He started doing odd jobs around the city like carrying heavy loads, finding lost cats, and kept training every single night. He also took nursing jobs and took care of old people by cooking for them. While doing all this, he kept training and seemed to be happy working as an adventurer who could actually help people. Finally, we come back to the present where the giant bull walked towards the adventurers and smashed the leader with his axe, sending him flying into the wall. Nor quickly checked him only to find out that he was dead. He looked back to see the other guys getting skewered by the bull, as it killed every single person in the area effortlessly before moving its eyes onto the white-haired girl. Nor's body immediately jumped into action as he threw a rock at the bull and diverted its attention before running away. The monster chased him with surprising quickness, and Nor realized that he couldn't run away, so he turned around and parried the bull's attack. To his surprise, the parry was so strong that the bull got blasted into the wall. It immediately recovered and jumped through the dust to attack Nor, but he was able to parry the attacks again and again as he realized that if he missed a single parry, he was as good as dead. He tried to find an opening but realized that he didn't have a single offensive skill to actually land an attack. His sword started chipping, but the demon turned towards the girl and rushed towards her. Nor immediately used his Feather Step ability, which increased his speed, to appear before the bull and deflect the attack once again at the cost of his own sword. He remembered his father telling him that an adventurer defends the weak even at the cost of his own life, so he stood his ground even with a broken sword. This time, when the monster attacked, Nor parried with all his might, which deflected the axe so much that it bounced back and chopped the head of the bull cleanly before getting stuck in the rocks. The girl was utterly shocked as blood splattered all around the area, but the magical barbed wire disappeared from her body. The girl immediately thanked him for saving her life, and asked for his name, but Nor replied that his name wasn't worth remembering and walked back outside. He walked through the streets thinking about how he almost got killed by a giant cow, and realized that he needed to train even more if he wanted to truly become an adventurer who could protect people. After Nor was gone, the dungeon gets filled with the white-haired woman's guards. As she turns out to be Lin Clay of a noble family, her personal guard arrives and watches the dead minotaur being inspected by the scientists, while Clay's guards lay dead on the ground covered by a white cloth. She immediately apologizes for not being here for her protection, but she tells him not to worry about it as it wasn't her fault. A little while later, another man named Dar enters and asks whether she is fine and details about what happened here. The news about the attack reaches her brother Ray, who is completely shocked to find out that his sister was attacked by such a monster. He asks Dar whether he has any idea what a minotaur was doing on the surface when it is supposed to stay in the innermost depths of the dungeons. Dar bows down and explains that this was definitely an assassination attempt, as they found out that the ring Lin recently bought from a merchant was tested by a magician, revealing that it had a mana stone of 90% purity, which is extremely rare. Ray still seems unclear as he doesn't understand why a minotaur would want a mana stone, but Dar reveals that he believes the mana stone was cursed by the neighboring enemy kingdom of Derry, who are known for practicing dark magic. Ray agrees with this assumption, as lately Derry's army has been harassing them on the outskirts, and now such a brazen attack on Lin without even trying to hide it proves that they want a war. Ray then asks Dar about the man who saved Lin's life, but Dar claims that they know nothing about the man apart from the fact that he killed the Minotaur with his broadsword in a matter of minutes but escaped quickly afterwards without even telling his name to Lin. The next morning, Nor goes into the guild as if nothing happened, when Fatty immediately walks up to him asking if he is fine. Nor seems confused. So Fatty explains that last night a deadly monster emerged in the caves near his construction site, which is why he was worried. Nor has no idea that Fatty is talking about the Minotaur that he killed last night, as he thought it must be a low-level cow monster since he managed to defeat it. Fatty tells Nor that he is lucky that he left beforehand, because even a former ranked adventurer like him couldn't have done anything against such a strong beast. Nor wipes the dirt from his face and wonders what kind of monster could it be that even an ranked adventurer is scared of it, and then thanks the gods that he only faced off against a giant cow. 
Nor asks what happened to the monster, and Fatty replies that some mystery man ended up killing the beast in a single blow, which really shocks Nor as he wonders how strong that man must be to kill such a monster, not realizing that he is the man Fatty is talking about. Later, Fatty gives him his pay for the day, but tells him to get a real job as well, otherwise he won't be able to earn much. Before he could reply though, a hooded figure appears behind him and calls him out. Nor turns around only to find the white-haired girl he saved yesterday and asks how did she find him. She apologizes for following him, but claims that she used her long-distance detection skill to find him. He asks whether she learned it from the thief schools, but she claims that she is from the magician branch but has equal skills in all the six branches. Lin notices that she is drawing way too much attention and asks Nor whether they can talk somewhere more private, but before he could reply, Fatty grabs him and asks what the hell did he do? Nor replies that he didn't do anything wrong while Lin deploys a soundproof barrier and asks him to come with her. They both exit the building and walk through the streets to a desolate area where she tells him that she really wanted to thank him, as not only did he save her life but he also saved the lives of a lot of citizens. Nor still doesn't know how strong he is, so he claims that she is so talented and he must have ruined her plans by butting his head in between. She tells him that it's not true, in fact, if he didn't come to her aid, she would have probably died there. She then claims that she wants to reward him for his help, but Nor immediately replies that her gratitude is enough. Lin, however, is not so easily pushed away, and she tells him that she is a person of status here, and even her father would like to thank him personally. He, again, refuses, which shocks Lin who has no idea why a man would refuse a reward from a noble. She asks whether there is anything troubling him and even claims that her father will give him a lot of land if he wants it, but Nor keeps rejecting her offers. He tells her that he doesn't need anything from her, which makes her tear up as she feels obligated to repay him for his help. She tells him that she won't move from this place till he accepts her gratitude, which reminds him of the time when he did the same to one of the instructors of the healing school branch. He finally gives in and agrees to meet with her father but refuses to take any over-the-top rewards. This makes her happy enough and she uses magic to conceal both herself and him as they walk through the city back to her mansion. When they finally reach her house, Nor is completely shocked as he has never seen such a big and lavish place. They walk by the guards and enter inside, while Nor wonders whether this girl is a noble if she is so rich. On the way, they end up running into her personal guard, Enai, who looks at him suspiciously and asks who he is. Lin tells her that this is the man who saved her life, and she immediately softens up, claiming that she will take them to the Lord. They follow Enai through the gallery when Nor spots a guy wearing yellow armor waiting by the window. He immediately jumps into action, spinning his lance before pointing it towards Nor, asking who the hell he is. Annie tells him to back off as he is Lin's guest. But this Pikachu-looking guy ends up making fun of Nor for looking poor. Eni introduces him as Gil and asks him to accompany them into the room, as she still doesn't fully trust Nor. They wait outside the hall as Lin's father, Clay, was talking to his son about the chances of war increasing, as they remember the last time they met with the King of Derry, who ended up insulting them and threatened to wage war against them if they didn't give them access to all the dungeons in their kingdom. Soon the door opens, and they all enter the hall. Both Enai and Gil drop to one knee in front of their lord, but Nor has no clue who the man on the high seat is, so he simply walks ahead without a care, alongside Lin. She introduces him to her father, claiming that this is the man who saved her life, and immediately the lord gets up from his seat and moves towards Nor, thanking him for saving the life of his girl. Nor tells him that he is not a noble, and has never talked to nobles before, so he doesn't know how to properly behave, but the lord doesn't seem to mind as he laughs and shakes his hand before asking him to choose anything that he wants for a reward. Nor immediately declines, claiming that he neither wants land nor gold. The lord seems confused but tells him that if he wants, he can have half the treasure of the oldest dungeons in the world that fall in their kingdom. Ray advises against it, as the treasure is worth more than a small country's GDP, but to their surprise, Nor refuses it as well, claiming that he doesn't want any kind of gift from them. The lord looks confused as to what sort of man would refuse such a gift. He then walks over to his seat, and takes out the giant black sword behind it, which used to be his personal weapon during his adventuring days. Ray seems a bit worried, but his father tells him that it's fine, as the sword should be used in battle and not kept as a decoration. He hands it over to Nor, 
who grabs the handle and immediately realizes that the weapon is heavier than anything that he has ever used. Nor thinks that it is just a random secondhand sword, so he decides to accept it as a gift, as he wanted all of this to end quickly so he could go back to work. The Lord asks him to swing it once, and to his surprise, Nor simply uses one hand to swing the sword so strongly that it creates a wind blast around them. Nor looks at the Lord and tells him that it's a bit heavy but he will manage. Which makes Clay laugh, as he can't believe this man just swung a two-handed greatsword with a single hand. Clay asks whether he would like to train Lin a little bit, as it is getting very dangerous nowadays, which puts a smile on the girl's face, but Nor immediately declines, claiming that there is nothing he could teach her, and decides to leave. On the way through their gallery, he looks at the sword once again and realizes that it is the same size as the drainage ditch, which means that he can use it to scoop out dirt from the ditch much more efficiently. Before he could leave though, he gets stopped by Gil who puts a lance to his face, telling Nor that he wants to see whether he is worthy of that sword, while Nor wonders whether he will ever be able to leave this mansion to get back to work or not. This is the end of I Parry Everything Episode 2. Thank you so much for staying on this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with our latest content. See you in the next video.